We continue to preview the 2023 college football season. Our stop today is Surprise Arizona, and we get to visit with Mike Nesbitt, the head football coach for the OUAZ Spirit, the Ottawa Spirit out in Arizona. Coach, last season, 7-2, and two, a share of the conference title, three-way tie, by the way, but yeah. you get another conference title. And what a standard you all have set out there for a program that really is still a young program. Tell us a little bit about last season. Well, I, I, I think you hit the nail on the head right there. You know, I mean, we've been really fortunate and blessed to, to have the seasons that we've had the last, you know, four years, five years and had some great kids come in. And, and last season was a, is one of those kind of a weird year. You know, you, you ended up with a couple games that you kind of thought maybe you could go undefeated and end up in a, in maybe a home seat in the opening round of the playoffs. And then, you know, you lose some leads late in some games and, teams come back and beat you and then you needed some help on the back end of some games to, you know, to, to secure another conference championship. And, uh, but, you know, overall, you know, the last six years that we've been here, we've been really blessed to have some great kids and great coaches come through here and help build this program. And the city of surprise has been just so welcoming to us to get us in the building and, and help us and, create a fan base. You know, we had people coming by this morning, picking up their season tickets for football and coming out and asking when practice is going to start next week. And, and so there's a good buzz about it. And, and it, you know, you can't say enough of just about our administration and everybody that's really supported this team and this football program. Well, it, it, you've given them something to support very well, and, and it, I would imagine the fan base has to be pleased with what they're getting to see. Coming into 2023, then, they're going to have to learn some new names. I, I, I hope that you have some rosters printed, the programs for game day, because uh, names and faces, especially on the offensive side of the ball that they've gotten used to in recent years, are going to be a little bit different. Tell us what we might see and what kind of competition may be at the quarterback spot. Well, quarterback right now is, you know, is completely wide open. We have three returners that have been in the program for the last three or four years, you know, that we've redshirted and played a little bit. But that job is a wide open position right now for sure. And, you know, I, I was telling some people the other night, they were asking about our team. And it really reminds me of that 19 team that we really didn't, you know, we came back off that first year and we were seven and four that first season. And I can still remember coming in at Christmas break and telling everybody, you know, maybe we underachieved and it was kind of like you guys had played one year and you're telling them, like, well, but we really did that first season. We lost three of the four games we lost were on the last play of the game by one or two points. Right. And so you go back and you look at it and then you come to this team. We're really young. We're young in a lot of places, but we're young with guys that have been in the building that have been in our off season they've just been backups. You know, they've been backups to Marcellus or Chris Ewings at running back or to Austin McCullough at quarterback. And same thing in offensive line. You know, we've got our centers coming back with David Sanchez and Zach Woltz at guard, but a couple of the tackles have been in the program. They just hadn't played a lot, you know, like last year, you know, that was Harvey's really first year getting to be the guy because he replaced Austin Lloyd and Austin Lloyd had been a mainstay at left tackle for us because he, was a true freshman and he grew through the program and then he had his COVID year. And so this team that you see, especially offensively right now, reminds me a lot of that 19 team. A lot of guys that have been around have done a lot of good stuff, but maybe it's just been in special teams. Maybe it's been in a backup role. And so now it's, it's their turn, you know, and, and that's, that's what's exciting, you know, because we did it the 19 team and then the COVID year, that was the team that, I always talk about that kind of got lost because that COVID year we had a group of brand new freshman wide receivers that played fantastic that year, you know, that were coming in and they replaced Jeremiah Greylock and Antonio day and some of those guys. And then we had Antonio day and Fitzroy that were backups. And then all of a sudden those guys became the starters of the group and they had a great, they had a great, you know, that spring season. And this team resembles that a lot. So we've got some, we got some young guys that are going to have to grow up really fast and learn how to be the starter and carry the water, you know, that they haven't had to carry. And then defensively, I think it's a total, it's, it's in the same boat. And the funny part is when you look at our running back and our linebacker core, those two position groups, we've had guys that have been in that position group anywhere between five to six years since we've been here. They've been the same guys, you know, <laughs> came in on the 18 team, 
they played 19, they played 20, then they played 21, they got their COVID year, and then they came back. Well, you know, you you, you lose Ryland, you lose Bobby Tomerlin, and Scotty Bonham, and some of those guys that you're like, David Jones, for example, right? Those guys have been around forever, and you're going, okay, who who's that guy now, right? And, and I think it's not only the coaches, but it's even in that position group where it's that deal of, all right, it's my turn. You know, it's my turn to be the next guy up that's playing, you know, replacing Bobby. And, and I think we've done a great job of recruiting in that. And so uh, same thing with D-line. Now, D-line's a little different in that Seth Ham will be coming back and Seth's had, you know, a great career for us and we were able to get him for one more season. And so uh, Seth looks great, had a fantastic offseason. And, and Seth was kind of in that boat of kind of like Austin Vaughn last year, you know, of, do I play? Do I not play? I want to try to go to the XFL or the USFL. And hey, look, just explore those opportunities. And if nothing comes of it, then you can, you've got a place. You know, you can come back and play for us. And and then we did a good job. We've had some good spring guys that have been around the building this spring and going through spring practice that we're really excited to see play. And so that one. And then the back end, the secondary. That's a little bit more mature group with Eric Holman. Uh, Malik coming back and, you know, and Isaac playing in the back end. Those guys saw a lot of experience for us last year. And so that one is, you know, not as Cornelius at corner. And so that group is probably out of any of the position groups, the corners, the safeties, and that O-line has some veteran experience that have seen the other people in the conference before. Coach, you, you have taken us through both sides of the ball just masterfully, and I really appreciate that. And you can tell, too, that that it's just it's your program and has been since, you know, you got things started the inaugural season back in 2018. Uh, you hired back in 2017 and, and coming into your sixth season. By the way, we're here on Midwest Sports Net speaking with Mike Nesbitt, who is the head coach for the Ottawa Spirit out in Surprise, Arizona, and the Spirit coming off a championship, conference championship season in 2022. Looking to build on that. Let, let me mention one more name then, since we got both sides of the ball. Landon Reeves, who is coming back for you, and he did a stellar job. 13 for 17 field goals, uh, automatic inside 30. And talk about automatic, 40 for 40 points after. I mean, that's something that, you know, you talk yeah. about a luxury. Well, it really is. No, you know, and, and, and we're really fortunate to have Landon come back. You know, we recruited Landon out of West Texas, and we were able to pull him out of there, and we thought we were going to lose him. You know, Texas Tech had come in, and we thought we were going to lose him to, to the Red Raiders, and and it was, you know, kind of our, you know, their misfortune when they made the coaching staff change. The new staff decided not to keep playing, and we were able to bring him back and get him in the fold again last year, which, you know, for us, our punting and our kicking position, you know, the last five seasons with Landon and Austin Bond have been all-conference and all-American guys. And so, uh, you know, we really believe in that, that kicking position, the punting position that goes hand in hand with our defense and our field position. And so uh, Landon is, you know, headed to another great year. He's had a fantastic off season and good summer, great spring. So hopefully he can keep that rolling and keep his consistency up. And it's nice too, to have a guy that is used to kicking in the West Texas wind and the weather and stuff. When we go to Dallas, we go to Fort Worth, we go to Oklahoma to play. It's not something that, you know, if you have never lived in the panhandle, you don't realize the wind blows every day. It's just how hard is it going to blow, right, in Oklahoma and West Texas. So that guy's never concerned about it, and he handles it really well. It's a lot of fun for him. Well, I, I am based in Oklahoma, and I have covered many contests uh, in, in the western part of the state, been to the panhandle, covered games out in Texas. You're right. The wind does come sweeping down the plane, and it really does make a difference that's not exaggerated uh, rogers and hammerstein had that right there i don't know if they were <laughs> that's <laughs> right exactly right the wind's <laughs> rolling down the plays right <laughs> well coach uh, you, again taking us through the the defense especially lots of returning names offense uh, skill positions that are wide open right there and one of the things you mentioned was was you know going out to play in fort worth let's talk about your schedule really quickly and i don't want to even go past the first couple of games because i know as a coach you're probably not looking to far past those first two games you can't really afford to you you're taking on arizona christian and you are at home for it's a week zero game august 26 get that saturday to open things up against an in-state rival there that is moving to a new conference and then the very next week it doesn't get any easier you get into sooner athletic conference play and you're taking on a texas wesleyan team out in fort worth 
that uh, really is wanting to try to get that elusive win against you all. So talk about the open to your schedule. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think that's, you know, we talked about that the last couple of weeks in staff meetings, just the fact that, you know, how important the first two weeks of the season are, you know, those first eight quarters are very important to this team and this football program. And with, you know, the guys in Glendale, you know, headed to the frontier and that team moving on, uh, you know, we, as Raiders and everybody across the country, we all know how important that part of the, you know, the, the framework of the season could come into play uh, for both those guys and us. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people across the country really respect the frontier and, you know, hopefully those guys go and do a good job in that league, but us playing those guys first, it, it's, it's going to be really important. And then going to Fort Worth, you know, a night game in Fort Worth and, you know, Texas Wesleyan always plays good at home early in the year. And especially in Fort Worth, you know, I was, I was kind of, I was down in Dallas a couple of weeks ago for a camp and I thought maybe we'd be their first. I thought coach Perdome was setting us up because I thought maybe we might be his first home game in the brand new field in the new stadium. And that was going to get, you know, jumped on us late that he would have a raucous crowd and all that, but we'll still be playing at the other stadium at the old stadium there across the town there. And so uh, but his team will be loaded. You know, I know both of those guys have done a great job recruiting in the offseason. And, and that's one of those games that I, I really believe that Texas Wesleyan game has kind of become that next rivalry game for us and for them. You know, we've had some some wild battles. And when you look at it, when you play all those games and um, everyone but one game has come down to the last play of the game to see who's going to win it and, and who's going to lose it. So I, I know there's a lot of intensity on their end and, and our kids love making the trip to Dallas you know we've got some Texas kids on our team and but that's a fun trip you know we stay in Fort Worth and we stay down there kind of you know right there on on Hell's Half Acre and the whole deal and the, you know we walk around and the kids have a good time and so it's a it's a fun trip our guys are really looking forward to it all right coach well, we are we we are going to follow the spirit we always enjoy following the spirit you all have a good program out there again you set the standard high so looking forward to 2023 coach mike nesbitt thank you so much sir for taking time with us today previewing the spirit for 23 and we appreciate you being here on midwest sports net hey thanks for everything you guys do joe really appreciate it